He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snarl of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuse, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot under a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I shall answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. We thank you for joining us this morning. We thank Sister Sandra for that scripture reading. And so now it's time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. It's time for us to begin our worship by going to God and inviting him into this place. We, we thank you so much that you have decided to join us, but we need to have God join us. It's more important in the day and age and times of which we live that there is no man that can bring us solace, but only God. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now asking you, God, to usher your presence into not only this space, but Lord, into the digital spaces and into the physical spaces of the people who are watching in their homes, in their cars, walking down the street, God, watching on iPads or TVs or computer screens in their office places. God, we need you right now to come to where we are. Father, we thank you that you are a God who hears in the midst of our afflictions, who hears in the midst of our sicknesses, who hears in the midst of our pains. And God, you open up every vestige of your particular power to pour out on us those who are in need. Father, I thank you that as I read through the book of Exodus, that God, you begin to usher in 
that you said you heard the affliction of your people and you responded by coming from heaven to send someone to speak to their needs. God, we pray today, God, that you would open the ears and our hearts and minds to receive. We pray, God, that you would bless our pastor as he comes to deliver a word for us, that it would be an in-season word. God, we need you to take what he says, God, and open our minds so that we might supply it to the continuity of our situation, to the circumstances in which we live. Because God, without you, we have nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. We would like to thank you for joining in with us uh, this Sunday. We want to thank those online and who give in person and through our web page and our, our app and who are mailing in your givings. We want to encourage you to continue to support this ministry at Antioch Progressive Church. You can mail your tithes and offering in and your giving to 7650 Amherst Street, 95832. Please do not mail cash. Once again, we want to thank you for your support this year. Our scripture is going to come from Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole world. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me, then see if I will pour you out a blessing, says the Lord of hosts. Father God, we thank you for this day, this opportunity, Heavenly Father. We ask you to accept our gifts and tithes and offering as to the belief in the word of God, because we know that Satan has no power over our gift, for this belongs to God, and we belong to God, for the upbuilding of his kingdom, the spread of the gospel, and the support of the poor. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. You are here moving in our midst worship you worship you Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are.
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are saved. Good morning, Antioch and friends. I want to share with you in prayer. Our Father and our God, we just come to you to thank you and to praise you. Thanking you, Father, for life and what you have done with us, through us, and for us. You've been good to us, you've been kind in the midst of all that's going on in the world, what's going on within our nation and state. We thank you, Father, even in the midst of the trauma in lives of men and women, boys and girls. Lord, we ask you this morning that you would open up our understanding and give us an insight into your word the truths and the principles of your word, Father, how that it is reality for us in everyday living if we would open our eyes and open our hearts and be able to receive what you have already said, what you already have done, and what you're going to do with us, through us, and for us. Lord, we pray for the sick and the afflicted, those that's in the hospital undergoing surgery, those having a father that's in home recovering, those having a father that's caring for all those that are less fortunate than we are to have active use of our limbs and able to move about for our own selves. We pray for them, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would open up a greater understanding into your word, how it applies to us on everyday living. Help us, Father, to bring our lives in line with your word. Help us to look beyond our own selfish individual opinions and thoughts, and actions and deeds, but to become God-centered in you, seeing your word, applying it to our lives, looking for you to direct us in everyday living. We love you, Lord, and we pray for those who eyes have been blinded. They see not the light of your glorious gospel. They see not the understanding of what Jesus did on the cross and what he did when he rose from the grave. Help us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you for the covering of the blood of Jesus for the sick and the afflicted and those, Heavenly Father, that's in recovery. We pray, Father, for the covering of the blood that it would keep anything that's not from you from bringing hurt, harm, or danger to us. We love you, Father, and we stand in need of a greater understanding, a greater work of your Holy Spirit in our lives to be able to go through 2021. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we give you the glory. Whatever you have done with us, through us, and for us, it was done by you your inspiration of your Holy Spirit, the work of the Spirit in our lives. It was you, Father, that brought us through and made it possible for us to be able to call on your name today. And we're calling on your name, Father, in the name of Jesus, thanking and praising you, giving you all the glory and all the honor. Everything belongs to you. The breath that you have given us from Genesis 2 and 7 is to praise you with, and we thank you. Bless us today, Lord, as I have been able to see insight into your word to how to help each and every one of us to grow into maturity of being that disciple that you desire for us to be, that you sent your son, that he died and rose according to the scriptures 
that we would have that insight and be a part of the family of God to live with you throughout eternity. It is in Jesus' name we submit to you. We bow our will, we bow our minds and our hearts to you in holy submission. That's our cross, Father, of learning how to say no to ourselves and yes to your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray, under the covering of the blood, amen. The purpose that I have set for today is to get you to see what God was doing in the Old Testament and what Jesus did in the New Testament. For you to see what God says he means and he will bring it to pass. I want to read to you some scriptures that I shared with you and I want you to write these down. You're gonna need pen and paper today. So take your time and get the pen and the paper because I'm gonna give you things that you need to write and you're gonna to have to look up things in your Bible and write. I've instructed Reverend Karif not to put the necessary scriptures that I'm referring to. I want to give you the chapter and the, and the book, but you have to look up the individual scriptures and write them to get an understanding of what God is trying to reveal to us in his word. God's word stands. What he says, he means, and what he means, he will fulfill. You have to understand that. You have to believe that. You have to work in your lives to bring and make that happen according to what the word is saying. What does the Bible say? How do I apply it to my life? How does the Holy Spirit work in my life to give me an understanding and the light of the glorious gospel to relieve us from all that we're encountering in 2021 and what we will encounter in 2021. The title today is Understanding God's Word to Apply it to Our Life. I want to read to you out of the book of Isaiah, starting at the 40, starting at the seventh verse of the 45th chapter. I'm gonna read this for you. And I need you to understand what it's saying. I form the light, created darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. That's what he's saying to us. I want to read to you out of the 46th chapter of Isaiah. And I want to read starting at verse 9 through 11. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel will stand, and I will do all my pleasure calling the ravest bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from the far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I also do it. Hearken unto me, you stout-hearted that are far from righteousness. As we go forth, I want you to be able to see Jesus declared some things, God declared some things in his Bible. You may not agree what the Bible declares, but it does not change its purpose or make a difference with God the Creator. As we take a look at Psalms 24 and 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. You take a look at Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21. 
He allows us to see and to understand. I'm going to take time and read that. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Because every scripture that I have for you that you've in this outline is for you to read. It's for you to understand. It's for you to apply to your life. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21. Come, my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. God is trying to allow us to see and understand in his word, in his word, whatever he says, he does. He brings it to pass. And whatever he says, he means. I'm trying to get you to see and understand that we've got to bring our life in line with the word of God because one day we're going to stand before him and have to give an account of our actions, our deeds, and our conversation. Action, deeds, and conversation. What we say, he's going to give us, a, we're going to have to give him an account of that. I want you to read every one of those scriptures that's been written for you in this outline. And when you get down to Deuteronomy 32, 39, you really need to read that and understand what it's saying there. So I'm going to walk you through for all to see what God did interceding in human history. See, God intervened in human history. He did. He created the heaven and earth. He created the universe. And then he came down and intervened in human history through events in people's lives, the patriarch, in, the, in people's lives, in Nebuchadnezzar, and all those kings. He intervened in their life to foretell, foretell what he was going to do with us because he created heaven, he created earth, he created universe, he created us. Therefore, he has a purpose. He has a plan, he has a process, and he has promises for each and every one of us. To get the Bible, you need to get your pens and your pencil ready. Because you're going to have to read and to write. For whatever God says he means, <laughs> and what he means, he will bring to pass. Isaiah 46, 11, Jeremiah 12 and 15, Psalms 37 and 5. He means everything that he says. I want you to know, I want you to understand that when he talks about every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, he said it, he means it, it's going to happen. Romans 14 and 11 tells us that. Philippians 2 and 10 tells us that. Every knee is going to bow. You either submit to his will and his way while we're yet in the land of the living or when we die and have to stand before him. He has angels that have strength enough to make us bow and make us confess that he sent Jesus, Jesus died, Jesus rose, and Jesus is the one for our salvation. He's our redeemer. He's our reconciliation with God because man has sinned and disobeyed God. You have disobeyed God. I have disobeyed God. And God is going to bring us to the point where we want to know we are free from our sins. And he did that through Jesus Christ. He did that through the Holy Spirit working in our lives. But you have to submit. You have to become obedient. He says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. we got a lot of people that can read. A lot of people can understand, but they don't apply what they understand to their lives and bring it in line with the word of God. God has a day that he's going to have to have, have us to stand before him and we will have to give an account. I am trying, the word is trying, the spirit is trying to tell us to line our lives up with the word of God. He wants us to understand whatever he did in the Old Testament, his son Jesus come right along in the New Testament and did the same thing. I'm going to show that to you today. I want you to read this for yourself. I want you to understand it for yourself. Because God is real. He's real. And I keep 
reinforce it. Whatever he says, he means. And when he says it, he's going to bring it to pass. Read your Bible. Take it for heart. God is not going to continue to put up with whatever we want to do. He is calling this world into a transition to understand who he is. The reason why that we have the problem that we're having right now with this epidemic, with this virus, the reason why is because the first commandment that he gave Moses to write for all the people of the earth, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we have, we have put other things and other gods ahead of him. And all he's doing is bringing it back to us to let us know that we're out of sync with him and we must bring our lives in line with the word of God. This virus is not over with. It's not going to be over with. They got another strand that's already started. They say, well, that's, that's just man. No, it ain't man. God works. He said, I created evil. I created good. I'm able to bring health. I'm able to raise the dead. That's what he's able to do. He's the creator. He's a God that has all power. And he wants us to see him working in our lives and working through people to make a difference that we might have eternal life with him. The whole goal that God has is for us to come in line to be with him throughout eternity. It's all written right here in your Bible. In your Bible, it's there. God's purpose, plan, and his promises are right here in the Bible. This is God's world. God is the owner. God will be heard, he'll be respected, and he'll be obeyed. This COVID-19 is just an eye opener to the whole world that this virus is not over because Matthew 24 is a start to prepare us for what Matthew 25 has to say. Matthew 24, he wants us to know and to understand these are just the beginning of the tribulations. But Matthew 25 is when Jesus is going to return. And what I'm trying to do, and what God is trying to do in his Bible is to prepare us for his return. Either way, if death comes to us, he wants us to know we are be ye ready, for you know not the day nor the hour. That's what he's trying to tell us in Matthew 24 and 44, and Luke 40, 12 and 40. He wants us to be ready, for we don't know when he's coming. We don't know when death's coming. We don't know when that's going to happen. We don't know we're going to be here tomorrow. So we need to be ready. And he wants us to be ready through the acceptance of his son, Jesus Christ. He wants us to be ready by becoming obedient to the word. We might come to church, we might preach, we might teach, we might make music, but if we don't become doers of the word, not just being a participant in him in worship, participant in him in church, but participant with him in our actions and our deeds, bringing our lives in line with the word of God. James wants us to know, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Just because we come to church and we hear the word and we go home and we think that's the end of it. No, God brought us to the church to be able to fellowship, to be able to worship and praise him that we might be able to understand and apply to bring our lives in line with the word. Bringing our lives in line with the word. Because the word is the only thing that's going to take care of our iniquity and our sin by obeying what the word has to say. That's the reason why over there in 2 Chronicles 5 and 10 and Revelation 3 and 5, he said, if your name is not in the book of life, you can expect this to happen. And see, that's where a lot of us don't understand. We don't believe that these things are going to happen to me. Well, he wants us to know if he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. And look what happened in the Old Testament. Look what happened to those older saints that's went before us. They had to die. And they're going to have to stand before God. Some of them are already standing before God at the throne of judgment. That's the reason why he wants us to know we need to examine ourselves on a daily basis to make sure that our life and our lives are in line with the word. Make sure that our 
Our name is in the book of life because if your name is not found in the book of life, it's only one other place for you to be. And that's to go into everlasting eternity in hell. Look at what God said and did and what Jesus did. I want you to watch this very carefully. Now in your outline, I will give you what Jesus declares in the book and the chapter, but you're gonna to have to find the verses. I've instructed Reverend K not to try to fill in the blanks for you or get your little side notes. No, no, he's not gonna help you today. This is where you got to go into the word. This is where you've got to study. This is where you've got to read. This is where you're gonna to have to ask God to give you understanding of what God did and then what Jesus did and what is the word saying to you. I want to read this to you. Jesus did what he saw his father do. There was equality with God in power. John, the fifth chapter, verses 19 and 20. I'm going to read it to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth, what he seeth, what he seeth, the father do, for what things soever he doeth, the son likewise. He's wanting us to know, John 5, 19 and 20, I don't do nothing to myself. I only do what I see my father do. That's what he's telling us. For the father loveth the son and showeth him all things, that in himself doeth he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Look at Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning God created heaven and earth. And look at John 1, 3. Pre, Pre-incarnated word Christ. All things were made by him. Was not anything made that was made. John, the ninth chapter. You got to look up the verse now. Look it up. John, the ninth chapter. Jesus tell the blind man to go wash in the pool. He went his way, therefore washed, and came home seeing. Exodus 3, verses 1 through 4. God made the bush burn. Jesus made Saul on the road to Damascus. Acts 9, look up the verse. Verses, look it up. Whatever he saw the Father do, he did. He made the bush burn and got his attention. Jesus made the, uh, Saul of Tarshish on the Damascus road, and he blinded him that he might see. God parted the Red Sea. Exodus 14. 14 through 22. Jesus stilled the storm. Mark the fourth chapter. You got to look at it. Peace be still. He parted, God parted the Red Sea. Jesus came along when there was a storm in the disciples' life, and he said, rose from his sleep and said, peace be still. The same power that God had in dividing the Red Sea, Jesus had the same power to speak, peace be still. God made Naaman whole by dipping seven times in Jordan, 1 Kings 5 and 9. You got to look up the verses for yourself now. Jesus made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the le leopards to be cleansed, deaf to hear, and the dead to rise. Matthew 11, and you got to look it up for yourself, what Jesus did. God delivered the he three Hebrew boy men from the fiery furnace, Daniel 3. 21, Jesus delivered Peter from prison, Acts 12. Acts 12, you got to look it up for yourself. God gave the children of manna from heaven in John, Exodus 16 and 15. Jesus fed 5,000 from a little boy's lunch with five loaves and two fishes. John 6, you got to look it up for yourself and see what Jesus did just like God did. I only do what I see my father do. He said, see my father. In other words, Jesus was there when all this was being done that he talks about. God, through the prophets, raised the Shunammite's son. 1 Kings 4, 8 through 37. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. John, the 11th chapter, you got to look it up for yourself. God gave Moses 10 commandments. Exodus 20, 3 through 17. You need to really read that because that gets back to what we're at today. Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, John the 13th chapter. You need to read it for yourself and see, 
I only do what I see of my father doing. God called Abraham to be the father of many nations. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Jesus called Saul to be a missionary to the Gentiles. Acts 9. You need to look it up for yourself and see. God, through the prophets, took the widow's container and it was filled with oil and never dry. 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. Jesus told his disciples to cast their fish hook into the water. And the first fish opened his mouth and got the coin to pay the tribute. Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Look it up for yourself. I want you to see that whatever God says, he will do. He'll bring it to pass. He wants us to know that he has power. He wants us to know that that power is given to, God, to his son and Jesus has the same power. The question is, is your life in line with the word of God? You need to read, meditate on the scriptures in the outline. Be ready, as in Matthew 24, 44, Luke 12 and 40. And I want you to read Revelations 3 and 3. My brothers and sisters, Saints and ain'ts, God's word is true. This epidemic is not over. He tells us in Matthew 24, this is just the beginning of tribulation. He's preparing us for his return. He's preparing us that if you read close in the scriptures, he talks about there were 10 virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. He's talking about the church. He's talking about how that there are people in the church that's preparing for his return. And there are people in the church that are just hearers of what's being said, not applying it to their lives. And when Jesus do come, it'll be too late to try to make preparation. That's the reason why he tells us to be ready for you know not the day nor the hour. And he gives us several examples of households. He said if a man knew when the thief was coming, he'd be prepared for it. And he wants us to know we don't know when he's gonna return. Jesus told us, he said, no angel even know. Only God knows when all of this is going to come to fruition but he wants you to be prepared with your actions, your deeds, and your conversation in line with the word of God. That is the most important thing that I can share with you is to get your life in line with the word of God. Don't try to evaluate yourself with another individual. You have to evaluate yourself according to what the word is saying. Make sure your word your life is perpendicular to the square of the gospel and that you can stand with the plumb line and be able to walk with Jesus when he comes. He's coming back. But when he comes back this time, he's not coming back as a little babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. When he comes back this time, he's not coming back to ride through the streets for people to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then to shout, crucify him, crucify him. When he comes back this time, he's coming back in power. He's coming back in glory. He's coming back with all the heaven's angels to declare your actions, your deeds, nations, kingdoms to be brought into judgment. Brothers and sisters, take God's word seriously. I want to connect with you to be able to see how God said things, how Jesus also came along with that same authority and ability and proclaimed those things, and how that he is going to 
bring all this to pass because he is God by himself. He is God all by himself. And whatever he says, he means. I'm a witness to that in my little life. I'm a witness that when he tells you something, he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. And that's the reason why that I can trust him for what he has revealed unto me and what I've seen him do in my life. What I've seen him do right here in this church is a reality to the truth of his word. And I just want you to be in line with his word that your life is written, your life and your name is in the book of life because that's where the evaluation is going to take place because all of us will stand before Christ at the Bema seat, the judgment seat that Chronicles, I mean that Corinthians talk about and that's where he's going to tell us every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. No excuses, but what does the word say? You can't blame somebody else like Adam did. This woman you gave me. No, we can't say that. The preacher that preached, he didn't preach what I wanted to hear. The choir didn't sing what I wanted to hear him sing. The deacon didn't pray what I wanted him to pray. No, that ain't gonna work. There is no excuses with God because his word is there and it stands. And I just want you to be the recipient. God had a purpose, he had a plan, he had a process, and he has promises. 28th chapter of Deuteronomy talks about the four, first 14 verses, the promises of God. But verse 15 through 65, it talks about if you don't want to listen, then this is what's going to happen to you. Read it for yourself and then apply it and know that God is going to bring all this to pass because look back and see what he's already done in our lives through your grandmother, your grandfather, to all them old saints who went ahead of you that loved the Lord and how he gave them peace, insight into the future. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. I hope you're able to see what we're trying to share with you Whatever God says he means, and what he means he says, and he will bring it to pass. Just look up, bring to pass in your Bible and see he fulfills everything. He said he called that raven from the east. That was Cyrus. Cyrus was named 200 years before he was even birthed into the world to do what God wanted him to do. He did it, and God wants us to know he's going to do what he says with us and through us, one way or another, if you surrender your life to Christ, if you allow him to be your redeemer, your reconciliator, he will do everything just like he said he would. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Some may not believe what your word is saying. Some may not understand what your word is saying. But allow the Holy Spirit to reveal unto them that you would get the glory and the praise. And they would be able to have the peace of mind and understanding that passes all understanding. That gives you the victory and the glory in their lives. Speak to their hearts, Father. They're stubborn, they're hard-headed, but speak to their hearts and let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ so penetrate them, they have a desire and a hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless them, keep them. Remember our sick and afflicted. Remember those that's in the hospital. Remember those that's home and recovering. We ask you, Lord, because of what your word says, we're asking you for a miracle for those that's being afflicted, that have a desire for you to be the Lord of their life. Because they have that desire, give them that will and purpose to be able to do that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So you have heard our pastor speaking today 
And we appreciate all that he said, but we want you to know that this is an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. Only what you do for Christ will last. And so we hope that you would give that life to Jesus Christ. You start that with a conversation with God, with prayer, and you say, God, I ask you, and I admit that I have lost my way. I believe that Jesus is the way for me to find my way back, and I choose to open my life to you. So today, we offer you that opportunity. We ask that you would just give us your name, your number. You can email it to us. You can call us any one of those ways. So we hope that you have been blessed. And we invite you to join us every week at 6 p.m. at our prayer line. And you can also join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for our Bible study. So we thank you for worshiping with us today, and we hope we'll see you again next Sunday at 10 a.m., right where you're watching us now. God bless you. Have a great day. I lift my hand, I pray.